Check one. There we are. Two. Good morning. Welcome to Roots and Branches. Whether you're here in the room or you are online, thank you for being here today. Thank you for bringing your heart. Um, we're going to open this morning with some music. If you're here, I invite you to stand if you want to and join your voice with mine as we uh, welcome the love of God uh, with a little Christmassy kind of song. Tis the season and whatnot. Let's, uh, let's welcome the love of God into our hearts and into this place. Angels from the realms of glory wing your flight or all the earth ye who sang creation story now proclaim messiah's birth Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Watching all your fault and fear Suddenly the Lord descending In his temple shall appear Come and worship Come and worship Christ the newborn King. Come and worship. Come and worship. Come and worship. Worship Christ the newborn King. Yeah, we are here to worship the newborn King. Uh, this is the season of Advent. We are preparing our hearts for the love of God to come. God's love made flesh dwelling among us is a miracle that we celebrate 2,000 years later. It's that big a deal. It's such a big deal. We put trees in our houses and <laughs> put lights where they don't belong. So it's that big a deal, folks. And I'm glad that you're here to celebrate that with me. Um, hey, if you haven't yet, uh, I want you to... Um, uh, if you're viewing online today on Facebook Live or YouTube, I want you to check out the, dis the links in the video description. There's a link to our website, rootsandbranchesmn.org, where you can find out more about who we are. And uh, hey, if you're also viewing online, say hi. Ch uh, jump in on the comments and uh, let us know you're here. Because like the people in this room, they were already saying hi to each other. So like...
fixed upon it, mount of God's unchanging love. Got it. Your love is strong. Your love is here. We thank you for uniting us as a community and as your people. Amen. You can be seated, and any kids that are here with us today are welcome to join Krista for Children's Church at this very moment. Silas is there. He's ready to go, and I want to invite Anna to come forward to share this morning's updates to get you clued in on what's happening around here. Let me just get on my toes here. Oh, and then I bonked myself in the face. Whoa. All right, we have a working mic, and I'm here. Hi, hello. Hi. Nice to see you all this morning. Um, you'll notice that we said uh, to send children who would like to over to Children's Church. We are out of nursery worker today, so if you have a little one who would maybe like to go paint next door, they're welcome to do that. Otherwise, you guys can just hang out here. That's cool, too. We're not like a fancy church that says that children aren't allowed to make noise um, in here. So feel free to just be like kids are kids. Let them be kids. We're okay with that. Hi. <laughs> Speaking of which, she's right here in the front row. Um, all right. I just have a couple of announcements that I want to mention. Um, also, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Anna. I am the church administrator here. I'm also one of our hosts. And I would also like to say thank you so much for joining us this morning, um, whether it's online or uh, here in person. We're glad you're here. Um, few things. Tonight is the youth group Christmas party. So if you have a middle schooler plus, okay, so middle school on up, so that includes high schoolers who are so cool, um, please go ahead and just come tonight. Even if they've never come to youth group, we'd love to have you there. It'll be super fun. It'll be right here. Um, they've got some uh, fun little activities planned for you guys. So that should be a good time, and we'd love to see you. Um, all right. Uh, real quick, I'm going to also just talk about Christmas. Um, our big Christmas celebration, you can see up on the screens, is going to be next weekend, you guys. Next Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. We are going to be doing the big family Christmas service, um, and that will be, like, the one to be at. So if you're like, gosh, I just love that big home 
family Christmas service. That's next weekend. That's the one to make sure you're at. Um, Friday, December 24th, we're going to do a candlelight Christmas Eve service. It's going to be late. It's 11 p.m. Um, and then on the 26th, we're just going to do, so that's n not next Sunday, but the Sunday after that, we're just going to do an online service, um, give everybody, the band, the tech team, um, our lovely pastoral family uh, that takes such good care of us. They're going to just enjoy actually spending a Sunday morning at home and relaxing. Weird concept for a lot of us here. But we're going to do that, but we're still going to make sure that we have a way for anybody to connect that Sunday um, and to enjoy uh, a lovely message um, from our Minnesota UMC. So that will be nice. Um, last thing I just want to mention, actually, sorry, I have two things. I have two things left. One, if you've brought in any donations for our refugee families here in this area, we want to say thank you so much. There is so much toilet paper over there, and that is awesome because... That is a hot commodity, <laughs> as we have learned in these times. Um, and you can only use it once, so it's always in need. <laughs> so those families are going to be super appreciative of that. When you have to pick up and leave, there are a lot of things that uh, we here in the United States, I think, take for granted. Um, and we just assume that everybody will have on hand. Uh, but toilet paper and a plunger. We have a few of those out there, too. Like, those are things you need, um, and those are not the things you're going to pack up and bring with you when you have to just up and go. So thank you very much. There's also lots of soap out there. We also have lots of, um, like, sanitizing and cleaning spray. There's a crock pot in there. So a uh, set of dishes, all things that these families are going to be super-duper grateful for. We want to say thank you for that. Those are going to get dropped off uh, here in the next couple of days. So what a time to give that to families uh, that are here for the first time, not really sure what this whole place called America is all about, um, and we're gonna show them some love that we're happy to help them get settled and uh, to be, be here for them um, in the small, tiny way that we can be. Um, one last thing, and this time I mean it. Uh, next thing I want to talk about every meal we do a lot with them throughout the year throughout the school year um, we are going to actually do a packing event if you've never come to a packing event they're really fun um, and they have it all set up for you so you literally you just assembly line and you get everything into these bags and then boxes and it's super great because we may like sponsor a child we may um, help get that food into the backpacks at the schools and we may help uh, kids who are dealing with food insecurity on the weekends, but somebody's gotta get all of that into the bags and then into the boxes to get delivered to the schools. So it's a huge process from start to finish. And we are going to go over and help out on January 20th. Now I know that sounds like a really long time from now, um, but those packing events fill up really fast and we would love to have those of you who are looking forward to going and would like to help out, we'd love there to still be spots for you to sign up in. So right now there are 43 out of 45 spots still open, but they will fill up fast. We're gonna go and help out with Coon Rapids United Methodist um, on that night. So they'll have people signing up, we'll have people signing up, um, and we'd love to get you guys uh, in there. So we wanted to make sure we mentioned it right away there will be a facebook event created this afternoon um that will also have the link to go to their website and get your name in there each person has to sign up individually we'd love for you to let us know you're planning on coming at the facebook event and then also actually register to go on the website um, so that you don't show up and they're like actually we can't let you in because those spots filled up and you know that whole thing technical whatnots um so keep an eye out for that i'll also make sure that i send out i'll just send out an email too with the link to that um both of those things let us know that you're going to be there it's a really good time kids eight and up are also welcome to come and join so we'd love to have you guys uh there and bring any teenagers or tweenagers that you might have um and then they can all kind of help out too and just see what that process is like because it's a very 
it's a humbling thing to be able to walk into somewhere and see that like you were a part of that process from the start to finish because I don't think we really think about like kids not having food on the weekends um and like you're looking at some of the food they're putting in those bags and like these kids are going to be excited for a can of mixed vegetables guys like that's something that we don't always we're like mm, yeah, it's mixed veggies throw it in the cart um but that's huge for some of these families and I think one of the things I love about who we are here is we're very much we get we get to that root of like gosh these little things can mean the, the most to some of the families in our community. And I think it's really cool that we don't let it get to us that they may just be the little things. It's the little things are the big things. They're the things that people remember. Those are the things that people need the most because they get most often overlooked. So thank you for continuing to be amazing. I really, I love, I love my church family. We're awesome. We do lots of stuff, and we, we're always looking for new ways to do that. So if you're not sure if you're in the right place, but you want to help other people feel comfortable or loved or safe this holiday season, I think you are in the right place. I think that this is the spot for you because that's kind of what we do here. I am going to hand things over to our scripture reader, Chloe. She's going to come up, and then after that, I think we'll pass it off to the guy who knows what he's doing. <laughs> Maybe that guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 18. Nearby shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, do not be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel and praising God. They said, glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Thank you, Chloe, and thank you, Anna, and thank you, everyone, for being here today, for being part of what uh, God is up to in this community at Roots and Branches. Um, I want to say something briefly about, um, so two Sundays from now, uh, it'll be online only on December 26th, and some of you might say, well, what do we want an online only service made by the denomination at the whole statewide level? Like, eh, what's that about? I'm not interested. Well, um, the person who's making that video service is me. Um, <laughs> so, so you can know it will be guided by someone you trust. Um, I'm already putting together some fantastic music, and there are going to be messages of, uh, from people across the annual conference. The theme of the video service is uh, divine interruption. So when does God show up in your life in unexpected ways? And there'll be pastors sharing stories of how that happened to them and connecting it with the Christmas story and then some really fantastic music as well. So join us for that. I will be there virtually and I would hope that you would be there too. Um, today, uh, we are jumping into uh, part two of a series that we're calling A Light in the Darkness, uh, The Power of Christmas for a Hurting World. And that is our way of working our way through the Christmas story talking about how the world that Jesus was born into was a dark place and it needed light. And Jesus was part of bringing that light of God's love into that dark world. And guess what? World's still dark <laughs> in lots of ways, in lots of places. And Jesus is still waiting to be born through you. Uh, and how do we access that light in today's dark world? And how do we tap into that through the story of that first Christmas? Um, so next week, 
again, is the family Christmas service, and we'll welcome kids into worship for that uh, during the whole hour. Um, we'll sing Christmas songs, and we'll uh, welcome Jesus into our world together. Um, next week's message will be a message about those who wander through life, uh, like the Magi who uh, explored from the East in search of a promise told to them by the stars. And in our world, so many wander through life, um, and yet there is a promise a promise laid out for us in the fabric of creation. And I hope you can all join us next Sunday and then again on Christmas Eve at 11 p.m. for the candlelight service. But today we're continuing to talk about a light in the darkness as we walk through a story that shows how Christmas is about including the outcasts, a story about shepherds. Uh, we all have our ideas about the shepherds from the story of Jesus' birth. Maybe it's an image informed by Christmas specials when you were a kid um, or precious moments figurines. Uh, the shepherds that we think of are usually silent onlookers, simply beholding the baby Jesus and his shimmering halo. Um, but the reality of shepherds that would have been found in the Judean countryside at the time of Jesus' birth is quite a bit different than those inoffensive portrayals. Shepherds were not dignified individuals. In fact, they were some of the most ostracized members of Jewish society in that day. Uh, first off, shepherds were virtually never the ones who owned the flocks of sheep. Uh, if you were wealthy enough to own sheep in Bible times, you were wealthy enough to hire someone else to watch them. Um, and so uh, the way you tended a flock was by allowing them to graze on the Judean countryside, wandering miles and miles to find green pasture each and every day. Um, and do, just quick question, do you think sheep take the Sabbath off from eating? That would be a no, right? And so, so that meant that shepherds who were Jewish in the Jewish faith by birth could not, had to work on the Sabbath to watch the sheep, which meant every single week they broke one of the Ten Commandments. Uh, so um, it's a major infraction of their religious codes, and it put them on the outs with their entire society. So that means the only kinds of people willing to do that work were people who were already on the outside. Uh, people who weren't welcome at the temple to begin with. So maybe they'd committed a sin that had gotten them shunned from their community. Maybe they were criminals who couldn't show their face in town. But either way, shepherds were not the soft-spoken, fresh-faced, salt-of-the-earth types we often imagine them to be. They were rough-and-tumble, ne'er-do-wells, who spent their nights under the stars, soaking in the starlight as they watched over the sheep they soaked in the starlight. They also soaked in all of the smells of livestock tending. So, uh, yeah, just imagine, if you will. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, shepherds hold an auspicious place in the history of God's people. Uh, shepherding goes all the way back to Cain and Abel. Uh, Abel was the shepherd who gave the acceptable offering to God, and then his brother Cain killed him because of it. And then when the prophet Samuel came to Bethlehem, yes, that same Bethlehem, looking for the next king of Israel, he looked over the sons of Jesse and said, you got anyone else? <laughs> and, and then Jesse said, just my son David, but he's off watching the sheep. So that, that was the same David that you know, slew Goliath and became king of Israel. And then there's also Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So there's this tension in our Bible. Uh, are shepherds the dirty outcasts we know them to be, or are they the signs of God's presence? Which is it? So that's the question in our minds as we turn to Luke 2 and reflect on the story of the shepherds that we just read. It starts like this. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them, the Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. Now, we often imagine angels as delicate, glowing children with chubby cheeks and dove's wings, uh, but the biblical picture of angels is usually pretty terrifying. Every time someone sees an angel, they are scared. Um, uh, you know, uh, 
Angels in the Bible often have eyes where they don't belong. Uh, Ezekiel describes an angel with four faces of four different animals. So who knows how many years these shepherds had watched over the same flock night after night, sometimes protecting them from wolves, but usually just kind of sitting there being bored. And then, bam, crazy looking angel, (laughs) right? Um, And this is an age before CGI. So you didn't see anything out of the ordinary, not even on a screen. Um, This vision would have been beyond comprehension for them, truly out of any frame of reference and truly terrifying. So the angel tells these shepherds to go to Bethlehem and then a whole bunch of angels pop out and they start singing glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. That's a big statement. Uh, The angels announce glory to God. We get that. It's kind of angel's job to announce glory to God. Um, And that's kind of obvious from all the swirling angels. And then they also say that those who are on earth whom God favors will receive peace. And you know, um, if you're just a normal everyday person and angels appear to you, God is favoring you in that moment. So, um, so these angels are receiving God's favor. They're receiving God's peace. And as these Jewish shepherds would have heard it, that word peace is the word shalom. Uh, shalom is the word for peace in Hebrew. But it doesn't just mean the kind of peace that we talk about where, like, no one's fighting. I mean, in my home with four children, I would settle for that. But the peace of the Bible is bigger than that. Um, it's, it's bigger than a quiet walk in the woods. Um, shalom is a different kind of peace entirely. Shalom in the Bible is a vision for global peace achieved through justice and equity. Where everyone has enough, everyone is cared for, everyone belongs. And these angels are singing this song of peace to these shepherds who can't even show their face at the temple. So you can be certain that no one had wished shalom on these men in years, apart from maybe a passing greeting. But for these divine messengers to bestow shalom on shepherds in a divine vision, that was unimaginable. This thought brings me back to that question uh, before. Are shepherds dirty outcasts we know them to be, or are they signs of God's presence? And the answer is a resounding yes to both. Uh, They are dirty outcasts, and they are exactly, and that is exactly why they are signs of God's favor. In fact, a few years later, as Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd, It all makes perfect sense. He does the things that shepherds do, guiding, protecting, leading, and Jesus comes to us in a form no more dignified than the typical shepherd of his day. But in Jesus, we can see that the role of a shepherd can actually be good, especially when that shepherd brings us the good news of a loving God. And so these shepherds run toward Bethlehem with terror and disbelief and also eager expectation on a mission from God to find this holy newborn. And from there, the book of Luke says they reported what they had seen wherever they went and that people were amazed by what they said. You know, when we think about who has the power to change the world, we usually think of the people in power. We think of presidents and kings who can change people's lives with the stroke of a pen. And there's someone in this story of the first Christmas who has that power. His name is Herod. Uh, He's the king of Israel at the time, and he hears from the Magi that there's this new king coming. And what does he do? He hatches a plot to put this newborn to death. And I'll be talking about the relationship between Herod and the Magi next Sunday as we do our family Christmas celebration. But today I want to compare Herod and the shepherds. Which of these characters is worthy to receive the divine proclamation of the Messiah's birth? 
I mean, shouldn't it be the dignitary? Shouldn't it be the one who can roll out the red carpet? Why would God entrust the good news of Jesus' birth to these smelly nobodies instead of someone like King Herod who could make the people respect and worship Jesus? Why would God do that? I want you to wonder, wonder that to yourself as I tell you a different story. A woman named Carmen Mendez uh, shared this story online last week and it kind of blew up on the internet. It seemed worth sharing here. Uh, she and her boyfriend were planning a quiet night together uh, and headed to their favorite fast food joint, Raisin Cane's, uh, the place that serves pretty much just chicken fingers. Um, and as they, uh, as they sat and ate their food, a woman who was visibly houseless entered the restaurant and started going from table to table asking if anyone would give her their leftovers instead of just throwing them away. And Carmen watched this woman as she walked from table to table being ignored each time. Um, and she watched as each person would walk to the trash and dump their food rather than give it to this hungry woman. Now, Carmen had volunteered with people experiencing homelessness for years, and so she wasn't uncomfortable around this woman. And so instead, she scanned the restaurant, hoping, hoping eagerly to connect with her and give her her leftovers. And she thought she had missed her chance just when she felt a tap on her shoulder. And there she was, this woman asking if she could have Carmen's leftovers. Carmen gladly got up from her seat and gave the woman a chicken strip, some fries she had left over. And Carmen saw the glares from the others in the store who didn't want to sit someone, sit near someone who they could tell hadn't bathed in a long, long time. Undaunted, Carmen realized that the dignity of this woman demanded more than just her leftovers. And so she went to the counter, begged the manager not to kick this woman out, out while they sat with her and she ate. And Carmen also bought another whole meal for the woman so she could eat something hot that evening. Uh, and I'll, I'll end this story in Carmen's own words from her, her post online. She said, the look on her face, this houseless woman's face, said it all. I have never felt something like this, pure, real gratitude. That hug she gave me was like a hug I had never felt. Those tears she shed were felt deep in my heart. I held her tight and let her let it out. I wasn't repulsed by it, I just held her. And that is a moment I will never, ever forget. So next time you judge a homeless person, think twice. Not all of them are hom homeless because of a drug addiction, or because they're lazy. Not that that even matters. So in this story, who is it that has a profound experience of God's grace? Carmen or the woman she helped? Of course, the answer is both, right? I read this story this week and immediately thought of our shepherds from the Christmas story they would not have looked nice. They would not have smelled nice. Not that it even matters, right? In fact, they might not have even been very nice people. But when they encountered the good news that God was doing something new in their world, when an angel met them with a message of grace, they received it with joy and they ran to meet the Christ child for themselves and became some of the first people on earth to meet the Messiah, the one who would show us what it means to love God and one another. How would you have reacted if you were Mary or Joseph and the first people on earth to see your newborn weren't friends or family, but mangy shepherds? Would you turn up your nose? Uh, or knowing what you know now about the unique place of shepherds in the story of God's people, maybe you'd see those shepherds approaching and think, 
Of course. Of course. Of course this is how the Messiah is greeted. Not with a trumpet fanfare, but with the quiet gaze of a band of nobodies who might finally have a chance at shalom. Because their Messiah has come. Their only chance at shalom. Because a Messiah has come. And on the one hand, based on our human expectations of what's respectable, what's dignified, this doesn't make any sense at all. These smelly shepherds are outcasts for a reason, right? What if they're criminals? What if they're ritually unclean? But this is the whole power of the Christmas story right here. If God made flesh can show up in the middle of a nowhere country, child of a teen mom and a day laborer, left out in the cold and welcomed by nobody but shepherds, then God can show up in the middle of whatever mess you find yourself in. You aren't so bad that God can't save you and show up in your life. You aren't so messed up God can't heal you. You aren't so far away that God can't find you and give you the same gift of shalom those shepherds received. If God can give shalom to them, God can give shalom to you. This is a story that begs for light to shine into our darkness. And that darkness comes in so many forms. Uh, for those of us who live lives of relative health and wealth and comfort, we're part of this story too. We are usually the ones who say, I just don't have room for you tonight. You can sleep with the animals when we're encountered by uncomfortable truths. Uh, we're usually the ones who hear that something might upset the status quo. And like Herod, we want nothing to do with it. If only we were more like the shepherds, fully aware of our need for grace, fully in tune with the needs of those on the outside looking in. Imagine what a world that would be. Imagine what that world would look like. It would look like shalom, equity, justice, and peace for all. And wherever your world feels dark, there would be light enough for everyone. I don't know how, how you need to respond to this message today. For many of us, I know that this, is a me this message is a call to repentance for the ways that we let those in need pass us by. How we can't be bothered to give up one chicken finger for those in need and how much of the beauty of God's love we are missing out on because of our hardened hearts. If that's you today, I want you to think of one concrete act of generosity you can do today that will make the world a place of shalom. But today, maybe, maybe you identify more with these shepherds. Before the angel appeared, you know, before the story of Christmas happens, they were just smelly nobodies out in the pasture somewhere. Maybe you don't know where you belong or if you belong. Maybe you feel like if you stepped one foot in a church, they'd sniff you out for the criminal and outcast you are. I'm here to tell you that there are messengers all around you today to tell you that your past, your sins, your doubts, and your fears don't disqualify you from the shalom of God. In fact, it makes you uniquely qualified to carry the love of God. The darkness of your past makes the light of God's love shine all the brighter. That's why Jesus didn't come in a gilded chariot or with a sparkling crown. If God can come to us as a helpless baby, then God's love can show up any time and any place when we're willing to act justly and love mercy and walk humbly with God. I'll invite the band to join me up here, and uh, I invite you to join me in prayer. God, we thank you that your love is here, closer than we can even realize. We ask that today you would help us all to realize our need for you 
in our lives and in our world. Help us to welcome you like the shepherds welcomed their Messiah's birth. Help us to announce your love like the shepherds did into their world. And help us to see those in need around us and to realize they are not outsiders who we can show pity on. They are one more face of your love in this world where we can experience your grace if only we open our eyes. Amen. This is the point in the service when Jenny usually says something more profound than what I said. <laughs> but she ain't here. <laughs> so that, what I said is just going to have to stand on its own, I guess, today. <laughs> I'll invite you to stand if you want and join me in our last song this morning. song we haven't done in a while um, but this is a song that announces God's love and God's arrival into this world and into our hearts it's a song of where we welcome God not just to reign in this world but to reign in our hearts so welcome God into your life with this song with me today you are good you are good when there's nothing good in me you are love, you are love, on display for all to see. You are light, you are light, when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. You are peace, you are peace, when my fear is crippling. You are true, you are true, even in my wandering. You are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life, in you death has lost its sting. Oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever reign. You are more, you are more than my words will ever say. Oh, 
my heart will sing no other name Jesus Jesus my heart will sing no other name Jesus Jesus may your heart sing the name of Jesus throughout your week in the ways that you live and love, in the ways that you show grace and mercy to the people in your lives as you act justly and love mercy and walk humbly with God. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas.